Hi everyone! Today I'll show you how to use EBSynth to create this hand-painted animation from a live footage using nothing but a single frame painting. If you are an animator, you probably know what a pain it is to draw or paint thousands of images to put together just a few minutes of animation. With EBSynth, you won't have to make that many paintings. In fact, you'll only have to paint a few keyframes and EBSynth will do the rest for you. Can you imagine all the spare time you'll finally have? I mean, you could probably learn French. Oh, mon dieu! <laughs> oh, de fouf! <laughs> While your computer is generating your beautiful animation, or learn to play Paganini's Capriccio 24 on violin, or throw a Harry Potter marathon, whatever is your preference. My point is that this is going to be fun. So let me walk you through the process. George swear you got a bogey flavor as well, Mont. In the beginning, you'll need a video. I've got this man in a winter coat here, so let's call him Johnny, all right? Now, Johnny is shot on a green screen, but you don't need your videos to be shot on the green screen. It depends on how you want to stylize your scene. If you want your background or different elements stylized separately, it is recommended to shoot on the green screen. All right, you're going to need three things. First, image sequence of your video. So let's open this in After Effects and let's render it as a PNG sequence. I'll make a new folder of video and I'll just render it in here. See, um, so now I've got the PNG images, that was easy. Next. You've got to pick the right keyframe or keyframes and paint them. That painting will serve as a reference of your artistic style and all the remaining frames will be stylized in that exact same manner. Now, bear in mind that EBSynth is an example-based synthesis. This is not some artificial intelligence that will take your painting as a slight suggestion and then create something perhaps beautiful, but probably very far from what you've painted. Now, EBSynth doesn't do that to you. EBSynth respects your style to the point that if you want to stylize a frame that contains objects that are not in your reference painting, it will explode. No, I mean, let's have a look at this footage. That's a different guy, that's not Johnny. So um, let's call him Danny. Now we've got two characters from The Shining. Um, let's say that I picked this frame as my keyframe and paint it. 15 frames ago, Danny was facing the camera, revealing a drum on the side of his box and a bag on his shoulder. Neither of it is in my reference painting. So how is poor EBSynth supposed to know how to stylize it? Now you could say, well, if you picked this frame as your keyframe and painted it, 15 frames later, Danny will be standing sideways, revealing the box on his back, and you don't have that in your reference painting either, smartass. Now what? Well, you're right. This might be a good time to use two keyframes and blend the results together. My point is, try to pick the keyframe that reveals as much as possible of your scene in that sequence. Easy as that. Now Johnny's back, so I'm choosing frame number 30 as my keyframe because his whole face is showing nicely. And now I'm gonna paint this. It is important to paint over your frame because your painting has to match the frame as precisely as possible. The better the painting aligns with the video, the better the stylization will be and the longer it will last. Meaning that EBSense will be able to use this keyframe to stylize more frames. All right, we've got the painting ready, so let's save it into a folder keyframes and I'm gonna name it 100030.png because that's the number of the video frame and we don't wanna make a mess in this, okay? So let's keep things tidy. Last but not least, rotoscoping. I know that you didn't wanna hear that, but if you want to add your background separately, you will need a mask. But that's what the green screen is good for. I mean, now you don't have to literally rotoscope Johnny's body. I would probably kill myself if I had to do that. So let's just kill the hell out of it. Let's get rid of that green. And we will render a classic black and white alpha sequence. That's it. We're done. And we can run EBSynth now. All right. Let's have an overview of the interface. 
This is EB Synth. It's the first version, <laughs> our little baby, we're still working on it, but it's already very powerful. To be able to synthesize your animation, you need to set the path to your source files. It's the keyframes, video, and mask. Now, mask is off by default, but you can activate it by hitting the off button. And see, now it's on. Next, you can set a few parameters if you want to change the default setting. You don't have to do that. But you have to set the frame interval that you want to stylize and um, name a destination folder for your result. And that's it. So let's do it. You can either hit the select button or drag and drop those three folders that we've just created. I'll start with the keyframes and drop it here. Now notice that it automatically detected the location of the project directory. Now all the paths are relative to this location. It also detects the extension of your files. If it's a JPEG or a PNG or whatever, see my video is a PNG, but the default here was JPEG and now it's changed. It also detects the number of digits in the names of your frames. That's those hashtags over here and they will be replaced with the numbers from the frame interval that you put down below here. Now what's important is that the video and mask sequences are numbered accordingly. They have to start and end with the same number. And also the number of the keyframe has to be the same as the number of the video frame that you painted. But that makes sense, right? Now, um, if you don't have a mask, you can just turn it off and stylize the scene as a whole. That's okay too. Now we get to those three parameters here and this setting has been carefully tuned by thorough examination. However, if you feel like your animation looks suspiciously too much like the video, you can increase the style weights up to, let's say, 10 and vice versa. If you want your stylized character to look a little bit more like the actor, you can increase the video weight. Now, mask weight, that's for when your transparent background is a mess. It hardly ever happens, but if you do have some pixels outside your alpha mask, that's when you increase the mask weight by one or two. But fiddle with the weights, it's a creative process, so you can try a hundred, for example. Now finally, the frame intervals. Every stylization starts from the keyframe, and then it runs to the beginning of the video until the end. So let me see. My keyframe number is 100030. My first frame is uh, one and zillion zeros, and my last frame is one zero zero one forty eight. So I'll just put those numbers in here. And you also might want to change the name of the output directory. Trust me, if you are running more stylizations in parallel with, for example, different keyframes, you want to name your output folders accordingly. I'll show you. Let's say that I made two keyframes and I want to synthesize two intervals. I would just hit this plus button and let's say that my new keyframe is 60. So 100060. I will leave the first and last frames the same, but this is up to you. You choose what intervals you need, okay? And uh, I would name the output folders uh, according to the keyframe from which the resulting sequence is made. So out 100060 and out 100030. And this is how you keep things OCD friendly. And believe me, you want to do that. And we're done. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have two keyframes, so I can't hit this run all button. But let's see what happens when I hit synth. There we go. Our out 100030 folder appeared. So let's have a look inside. And we have a couple of the first frames. And obviously, I speeded up the process. But I did two French lessons in the meantime, and I've got my animation here, so everything's great. You can do the final compositing in After Effects or wherever you prefer, and the result can look, for example, like this. This stylization, including the final compositing, was made by Jakub Javora, an awesome, awesome concept artist. So make sure to check him out. And that's it. This is EB Synth. We are Secret Weapons. Et j'espère que vous trouvez l'apprentissage du français plus facile que Joey. <laughs> All right, bye.